In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to use the Skeleton Setup tab, a component of the Figure Setup tools for Dash Studio, to create your skeleton and bones for your model. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the Joint Editor tool to modify the parameters of those bones and how they affect the mesh when those bones are manipulated. I'll start by navigating to the Tools menu and selecting the Joint Editor tool. I'll also need to use the Tool tab as it shows me information about the tool and the bones that I have selected. Due to time constraints, I'll be showing how to adjust each parameter in its own video. We'll start with the center and end point. First I navigate over to the View Selection and change my view to one of the orthographic views. I do this so that it will constrain the modifications I make to the joints on a single plane. If I select a bone and hit Control F to frame, I can begin to see some manipulators in the viewport that will allow me to adjust the center point and the end point of the bone. The center point of the bone is the center of rotation. This is the pivot point for the bone. The end point is a point that's relative to the center point and it allows me to identify a point in space that I can draw an imaginary line from the center point to the end point for point at functionality of the bone. I can adjust these points by using these manipulators in the viewport by simply clicking and dragging to move them. I can also use the sliders to manually adjust them. I can click on the handle to drag it. I can click on the ends to nudge it, or I can manually enter a value. One thing to note here is if I'm manually entering a value, I can do simple math in this field. Let me go ahead and move this back down. Now notice that these points do not share a common axis and they should. The axis they share is the twist axis. In order to get that to happen I have a couple different ways to do that. I can click this align button and that will perform a one-off action. What I mean by that is if I now move this I have to click it again in order to get it to align. I don't want to keep having to do that. So I can come over to the auto option and now when I click in the viewport it automatically aligns as I drag. And it will align whether I drag the center or end point. One thing to note about using the auto option is you notice that the orientation sliders have been disabled because it's automatically filling in those values. If I turn that option off, notice that it makes those sliders available again. I like to work with that on. As I'm moving around the center point, you notice that the center point for this bone and the end of its parent bone are not in the same place. If I want to change that, if I want to snap the center point to the end of the parent bone, I can select this snap center to parent end and it will do that for me. If I move to a bone that has both a child and a parent, 
I can use the auto option for snap endpoint to children to move the endpoint of the parent bone. Notice as I drag this around, not only am I realigning the bone I have selected, but I'm realigning the parent bone so that its endpoint matches the center point of the bone I have selected. Using what you know now, it's a good idea to go through your figure and set up the center and endpoint positions and their orientations on your entire figure before moving to the next parameter. We'll cover the other parameters in the next videos.